Winter finally makes it to Central Florida, and so does the Adaman. Stick around to find out what we think of it. For those of you who have yet to shoot a big boar, I'm here to tell you, it's a different animal. It takes a skill set more closely aligned with that of shooting a magnum springer. A consistent hold, shoulder, and cheek are normally paramount to success, but not so much with the adamant. I found it to be less sensitive than the typical big boar, and with a gentle hold, gave me some nice results. Cocking and cycling are exceptionally smooth and are on par with the finest air rifles I've ever shot. The side cocking lever has no rough edges and is surprisingly light to operate. I'm also happy to report that there's zero wiggle or play. It's all business with this action. Complementing the action are a thumb hole style stock and grip with a rake in position that fits my hand perfectly. The distance to trigger was spot on as well, for a guy with smaller hands. This M2 takes advantage of a wooden stock that's painted in a rubberized green that's exclusive to Airgun Depot. It's soft to the touch and very grippy. Its cheek piece is adjustable and so is its rubberized butt plate. Can you guys tell that I really like the stock? Its design is actually inspired by the British sniper rifle model L96A1. And that's a good thing, because it feels fantastic. Before we get too much further along, we've got some things to touch on. It's really windy today. They're blowing from my 7 to my 1, steady at 6, and gusting to 17. Deplorable conditions for making an airgun review. But ideal conditions for demonstrating one of the merits of a big bore. Wind resistance. I'd also like to make mention that the Adaman Type 2 M2-357 is an extremely powerful air rifle. It develops almost 150 foot-pounds of muzzle energy, enough to penetrate almost 21 inches of calibrated ballistic gelatin at a distance of 50 yards. So this is one rifle that shouldn't be shot anywhere in the vicinity of people. And on the topic of power, you'll notice that it's been shooting an 80 grain pellet at about 890 feet per second. This ain't a toy, and if it were a little warmer outside today, that 890 would be more like 910. By the way, in case the news hadn't gotten to you yet, Predator is now making a 35 polymag, and they're looking pretty good.
Regarding new to the market ammunition choices, here's another one that I've grown fond of. Aero Magnum Precision Big Bore Ammunition specializes in the making of air gun slugs as opposed to pellets. These Tomahawk semi wad cutter classics weigh in at 109.5 grains. And the Lothar Walther barrel in this Adaman likes them an awful lot. And had I had more of them to experiment with, probably would have been my go-to slug for this rifle out past 100 yards. For an idea of what they're truly capable of, you can check out AEAC's Facebook page. Aero Magnum prohibited me from sharing details with you, but the ones I had on hand that day were of a proprietary size and shot even better than the ones you see here in the video. As manufacturers like Aero Magnum get better and better at making them, I foresee slugs being a bigger part of our industry as time goes on. Another slug that the Adaman took a liking to was the Aero Magnum Devastator 128.5 grain hollow point. Its heavier weight probably makes it a 50 to 75 yard slug in this gun, and as you'll soon see, can create a lot of tissue damage in that range. That's a bubble level you see me referring to sticking out the side of the scope mount. A helpful little tool to ensure there's no cant in your setup. The level and adjustable scope mount are both courtesy of Masood over at Eagle Vision Cam. And if you're not familiar, he's the guys whom scope cam equipment we use here on the channel. We're a bit sheltered here between the live oaks but I can tell that downrange the wind is starting to pick up a bit. <laughs> this big bore really likes to hole in one. You remember the effects I mentioned that warmer weather has on this gun? Well, here you go. It's not by accident that the Adaman's 250 cubic centimeter tank produces 150 foot-pounds of energy shot after shot. And if you fill it to 300 bar, it'll give you 10 or 11 of them before it falls off the regulator. And if you don't want to, or simply don't have the air, you can recharge to just 285 bar and still be able to shoot the entire 7-shot magazine at maximum velocity. 
The Adamin utilizes a nifty little restrictor in its reservoir, enabling you to open up your air tank's yoke all the way and just leave it there while it recharges. This is a welcome feature that makes refilling a whole lot easier. The Adamin Safety is a simple design and operates smoothly. And its single stage trigger can be easily decocked. The Adamant's trigger is just fine, and for the most part, didn't get the better of me. But every once in a while, it would catch me off guard, causing me to throw my shot. Its savior is that it's light and fairly smooth, but a second stage stop would make this already excellent rifle even better. The M2's barrel is shrouded but this is a cosmetic feature only. There's no sound deadening technology within. But considering this rifle's intended purpose, that's okay. This, my fine friends, is the M2357's intended purpose. The polymag penetrated 12 inches, and I could about put my fist in that initial cavity. An excellent choice for this rifle when seeking maximum shock. Heavier Devastator carried itself a little further, and its hollow point head stopped the party in just 13 and a half inches. Another good pairing for this rifle. Do you guys remember when I mentioned the penetration capabilities of this platform at 50 yards? That tomahawk could have penetrated two of my midsections. Don't know about you guys, but to me that blunt nose tomahawk done tore it up and penetrated 19 inches too.
and our penetration winner at 21 inches, the JSB. Guys, I gotta tell ya, I came really close to emitting my 100 yard groups today. I've really grown fond of the Adamant, and these winds are pretty prohibitive of an objective evaluation. When an organization like Adamant and Air Gun Depot trust you with their livelihood, you want to be truthful, but you want to give them a fair shake, too. And with these winds, I just wasn't feeling it. But eventually, curiosity crept in, and I decided to go for it. After all, it is a 900 foot per second 9 mil. If anything can blast through 15 to 20 mile an hour winds out to 100 yards, it's this. What you can't see here is that they're swirling really good at the end of the pasture, and I'm just giving them a minute to settle down. If you're hunting deer or hog, all seven of those would have been lethal and well within the 8 inch vital kill zone. But I think the Adamant's got another trick up its sleeve yet. Can you guys tell I'm putting you together? I am. Check this out. Alright, so that one went a little wide, just outside the frame up and just to the left of that first impact point. But it's all smooth sailing from here. Yes, yeah, Steve. All three went in the same hole. I am only shooting at 10x today, so sometimes it's hard to tell from my perspective when they hole in one like that. Seriously? This is the stuff that air gun dreams are made of. Whoa. Autofocus temper tantrum. Sorry about that, guys. What the heck? Bad camera. Bad camera. Well, that's all for today, guys. And hey, if you see him around the internet, don't forget to congratulate Norm Ferguson of Bowling Green, Ohio, and Chris Timson of Glasgow, Scotland, for being our holiday air gun giveaway winners. Airgun Depot and Airguns of Arizona made that happen. So on behalf of AEAC, 
and all our subs. Thank you. And please don't forget, guys, this episode was made possible by Airgun Depot, JSB Predator International, and Splatterburst Targets. And you know the best way to thank them. As for me, like, subscribe, comment, and tell your friends about us. And don't forget to check us out on Facebook for behind the scenes pictures and information. I'll share things here that won't make it into the YouTube videos, and you won't want to miss out. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you again soon.